Hey guys, Mike with Long Range with the Lilies uh, here at Mid South in Clarksville, Te Tennessee, uh, with Jerry and Matt of Mid South, um, and we had an opportunity. Uh, I just finished shooting the AG Cup, and you know Mid South's local to the area. I was up here for work, so uh, what better way to come in and talk to these guys about you know the the industry and supply and demand and everything else? So. Uh, we'll just get into it. Jerry, do you want to introduce yourself? I'm Jerry Jordan, General Manager at Mid-South Shooter Supply. And I'm Matt DeWine. I'm a general warehouse worker here. <laughs> Jack of all <laughs> trades, yeah. also a competitive shooter. Yep, yeah, sometimes. So, uh, Jerry, what's the history of Mid-South? How did you guys get started? Well, Mid-South was started in 1969 in East Tennessee. Okay. Um, the story goes back that it was a shed from Sears that you just bolted together that came on a pallet. <laughs> uh, the demand was met for scope rings and bases that were not carried in your general dealer market. And the gentleman had a full-time job. He'd come home and open up mail, ship you the base of rings you need, and then it just evolved from there. Uh, uh, David King bought it in 1998, and uh, we've moved to several locations here in Clarksville and finally settled down here where we are now for the last 15 years. Okay. And uh, what would you say you know, Mid-South specializes in now. Obviously you still sell, you know, scope rings and stuff sure. like that, but what would you say you're, you're most known for here at Mid-South? I'd tell you our, our depth of inventory covers reloading probably the most, okay. most complete. Uh, of course, all the new accessories we try to pick up, but mostly reloading. Okay. Um, I think for our shooters, you know, whenever we talk about reloading, these, in current times, we talk about supply and demand. Um, I know I, as a, uh, consumer, I don't really have a good knowledge or a good understanding of like how the supply chain works. Like, let's just take powder, for example, like I shoot, um, Varget, for example, well, how does it go from being manufactured in a plant? And it's my understanding that happens in Australia. Is that correct? correct. Yes. And then it, you know, how does it get from them to, to you as a distributor out to like the consumer and you're a direct seller as well. Correct. But you also distribute as my understanding. Correct. So um, some of that, I don't know all the parts, but in short, it's manufactured in Australia, shipped in bulk across the ocean, then either railed or trucked to a facility, uh, Hodgson for this instance, then they will bottle it for consumers. Uh, which will be your eight pound, four pound, and one pound jugs. Sure. And then your bulk OEM that may use a variant of a raw material from Bargain to load in um, in the ammunition plant. Uh, so then by that time, then it's bottled, then it's shipped to us. Then a couple week period, then we can get it out to you guys. So, you know, you guys, I'm assuming business has been just as crazy for you guys as it's been for everybody in the firearms industry lately, whether it's you know, firearms, actually components, ammunition, you know, ammunition components, it seems like everybody is buying everything. Um, like I have a, a buddy who runs a, a retail store and he was amazed at stuff like, you know, just pistol grips for ARs and stuff like that. It's just selling like hotcakes. It seems like everybody's buying it. What's it been like here for you guys for the last few years? Oh, about the same. I mean, let's just say the, best, the last 24 months, you had an introduction of over a million new shooters. That's that's just new gun owners. That's not new guns, that's just the owners themselves. And most people know you have more than one gun. And then as you start participating in the sport, you find your niche that you like. And we were already at probably 80% capacity before any of that hit. So sure. you had that much more volume, um, not even putting in a raw material issue uh, due to the pandemic. Okay. so. We have this increased demand signal because of all the new shooters that are flooding the market, which is a great thing for us as, um, you know, both as people in the industry and as just general Second Amendment proponents, that more new shooters is always better for us. How has that affected the supply chain without even factoring in COVID? It, it, it was already at, at, at its top. And so, you know, you produce your 9 mil, your 223, that had probably some probably had some room to grow but then all your extra parts as you came through just were not prepared everything just in time inventory which is what most manufacturers have switched to over the last 10 years it just was absorbed so quickly into the market and just could not keep up in production so when you say just in time um market you know for those of us that aren't in the you know supply demand or retail system i'm assuming that means that you're stocking just enough 
to where you're selling, anticipating selling out of what you have, and that way you're not carrying a surplus of stock and tying up money. Is correct. that correct? Yes, correct. Okay, I just want to make sure I understand it. I'm not smart on that <laughs> stuff. Um, so then, you know, obviously, if you're saying we were kind of at that peak and we were operating right at max capacity, and then COVID hit and the demand surge just went up, and in addition to that, we started having supply chain issues. Correct. So how has that affected you guys? Well, you're so. Let me back up just a little bit. But sure. prior to that, you also had several big distributors that went out of business before that. So the inventory that was already on distributor floors was less than it was before, it, it, less than normal. Sure. And then you had manufacturers shutting down. You had Remington shutting down and some other that were very big ammunition suppliers. So that in turn also added to the less inventory in the system. Okay, so now we're... We've got less inventory in the system, we've got a pandemic, and now we have kind of a surge in buying, and I'll call it panic buying for lack of a better Sure, not just from the people, they're already Second Amendment folk, but the new people also. Yeah, the new the new people yeah. that are out buying guns, and um, I know in the past couple of years, you know, I spent a lot of time at the range as a competitive shooter. Uh, my range, I live in a small town, you know, I think we have like 3,000 people in my town. So everybody that shoots kind of knows each other. Yeah. And it seems like every time I go to the range now, there's somebody I've never met there. It's a new shooter. They're, you know, really unsure of what to do with their firearm and that kind of stuff. And uh, I know we, we were talking about this earlier. Um, even the old shooters, when I've talked to them, they're saying stuff like, man, I'm just buying everything. If I see it, I buy it. Like, I may not even have a gun for that ammo, but I'm buying it. You know, I see the same thing out of reloaders. Um, if they see like a, a hard to find powder or any powder for that matter, they'll just buy it with holding on to it with the hopes of either trading it or selling it or getting something they want out of it. Yeah. How much has that affected the market? Uh, I believe it's very similar to toilet paper early in the pandemic. Yeah, sure. It, it, same thing, you're buying everything you can. Uh, we kind of took a step back and started putting quantity limits, uh, reasonable limits that we felt to kind of spread the wealth, so to say that we hopefully could supply more people with with less goods. So that's an interesting subject too. I see it online where, um, you know, every place has a quantity limit now. I think that that's pretty standard across the board yeah. to prevent somebody from coming in and scooping it all up and either price gouging and reselling or just hoarding it to where nobody gets it. Um, how much has that like, you know, how much do you deal with customers that are upset at quantity limits or anything like that? Or, do you, or is it just, we're still at the point where guys are just so happy to get anything that nobody complains? I think they're starting to get used to it now. I think maybe earlier on when all this was happening, it was kind of bothersome, but I think everybody's pretty much used to it. Yeah, I mean, you know, toothpaste is limited. Shoes, everything's limited now, you know. So. I, didn't, I had no idea toothpaste was limited. <laughs> a little sarcasm there, but yeah, yeah I mean, it, it seems like anything anybody wants, there's a limit, and people are kind of used sure. to paper towels, toilet paper, whatever, to be limited. So. so how do you see, like, from my perspective as a consumer, I'm starting to be able to go into places, and occasionally I'll see Varget, I'll see 4350, I'll see some of the stuff that I buy, it seems like things are sort of maybe getting better. Is that what you guys are seeing too? The last two quarters supply has started to loosen a little bit and, and it, it come available, but it it's a production loosening. So with the big manufacturers manufacturing Varga, for instance, that may be all the Varga we see for three months or six months or whatever. So as it sees, sits in the pipeline, you know, who knows when we'll get another one. So what you're saying is that stuff I'm seeing, it comes available and once it sells out, it may be a little bit before I see it again. Yeah, especially, I mean, if we keep talking about Varga with the one supplier, but even in 9mm and 223, you'll see your favorite flavor of 223, 9mm, 40, whatever ammo it comes there. It may not come back out to the next production. I mean, hunting, hunting calibers we still have not seen as far as rifle calibers. Okay, so for the guys that you know are watching, they're obviously familiar with Mid South Shooter Supply. Do you have any advice to them on like what the best way is to to stay on top of you guys to buy it when it's in and stuff like that and not quote unquote miss the boat? Uh, I mean, our website has a notify when available. Uh, sometimes it's one box and it's sending an email to hundred thousand people, so that that can be aggravating. Uh, sign up for email specials. Sign up for email list. We try to notify you when things are. Uh, if you're on that list, uh, lots of times you'll get priority. Uh, 
viewing of a product before we release it just out there. Okay. Um, so we try to take care of those that take care of us. So it does pay to kind of subscribe to your email and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. It gives you like a head start on things. Um, where do you see the future going, like the next couple of years? Do you see it more of the same? Do you see it getting better? Mm, that's a tough one. <laughs> I hope we only had that answer. Uh, I, mean, I, I think we're going to go up a bunch of peaks and valleys. I think it's going to get better for a while, and then some, something will change, something will happen, and it'll get tightened back up, and then it'll go up. But that was kind of the cycle we had you know, about 12 years ago of availability, and, it, and just hopefully that'll slowly flatten back out. But uh, right now, I think that's what we'll see is peaks and valleys. Okay. I noticed you guys are, are growing, um, and you guys are putting in more systems to be more efficient and to ship more product and everything else. Um, as this market continues to grow, do you foresee this as being like a, a sky's the limit kind of thing? Or do you think that, you know, we'll, we'll stabilize out and, and everything else? Or do you think it's just solely tied to the political climate? I mean, history shows that you have a little bit of that. I mean, as a business plan, we, we want to grow the business. That's what we're here for. Um, so we'll keep pushing that. I don't think it's sky's the limit. I think there's going to be a real big peak. Then you're going to take a valley and hopefully that valley's not as low as the peak was high. Mm -hmm. And that you kind of, that you'll settle out for a year and then two years and something probably could happen politically or uh, environmentally and you just said the it peaks back up. Sure. Um, is there anything, any advice you have for guys out there um, looking for supply and stuff? It's, it's just it's like hunting. You just got to keep going out there and, and just go after it and yeah. keep keep looking. You know, so it, it'll it's going to take a little work. Okay. Um, is there anything else you guys want to talk about? I'm kind of at, a, at a, a loss here. This is all so amazing to me. I'm just kind of overwhelmed by the magnitude of everything that um, kind of out of questions. Is there anything you guys wanted to discuss? Can't think of anything. No, nothing. Here. All right. Well, I greatly appreciate you guys' time. Uh, we're going to go walk through the, the warehouse here, and it's like, uh, it's like Disneyland for me out there. <laughs> um, if only I could buy it all, but... Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, hit up Mid-South Shooter Supply for all your guys' supply needs. Um, this stuff, the vastness of items that you guys stock was really amazing to me. I was familiar with you guys from a reloading component perspective, but I was pretty amazed to see all the other things that you guys, you know, sell from like scopes to, you know, what everything that I could think of out there. So and we're always adding new stuff too. Yeah, cool. So guys get on their website, check them out. Um, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys out there. Okay. What would my official title be? <laughs> Warehouse, Warehouse do all? Uh, yeah, the, you have to come out with I was the one prepared for that one. Uh, <laughs> the hardest question. What exactly would you say you do here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, let's, let's ask this, Matt. What is it you do here? <laughs>